so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. It is a true statement to say that we were created by a God. And man did not create God, but God created man. We are not an accident of the scientific world. We were not here because of a big bang. We are here for a purpose according to Revelation chapter 4. As I will go there, we are created being by a creator and we hold true to our creator whether we believe it or not and that the bible says in revelation chapter 4 for thou art worthy O lord to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So man that was created by a creator called God, Almighty God, Jehovah, he made man with the respect and with the care and with the acknowledgement of God the Father. And I'm going to tell you right now, people within the sound of my voice as I preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. God, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ who is God, your ultimate failures of the God that created you for the sole purpose of God. I know probably within a shadow of a doubt, 95% chance that when you started this farmer's market this morning, you did not get down your knees and ask God to bless it. I guarantee these vendors are more thankful for you to hand them a George Washington and then God handed them the fruit for them to sell. And yet the Bible says we're to rejoice evermore, giving thanks all the time. And yet you stand here week after week after week, you hear the gospel being preached and you will not come to God. You are in a violation of Revelation 20, chapter 4. You are in a violation of giving God the honor, God the praise. Many of you according to the scriptures, that many will go the broad way that lead us to destruction. Many of you have not come to Jesus Christ for your salvation. You have violated what you were created for by God. You see, if I go in a, in a college classroom, if I go into a public school room with a PhD, a piece of paper, say how smart I am, and if I say everything was here by accident, and then I don't have to answer to a God. I have nothing to answer if I came from nothing. And yet, if God who is the creator, created us for the purpose of giving him honor and power and glory and reverence. If that is God the creator that's not taught in the public school system, and yet it is so by the Holy Bible, you have failed by not giving God the glory and honor by receiving Christ as your Savior and giving Jesus Christ the ultimate you see, some people have told me, I keep the commandments. The very first commandment, number one, top of the list, every week, every day, every moment, number one commandment, God first, all the time. And as a born-again, Bible-believing Christian of the Bible, of Jesus Christ who saved my soul, I violate that first commandment all the time. Yes, me. I'm a safe sinner. 
I do not give God the reverence all the time of my life. And yet with that, God has. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And we've got to realize that what you believe is a product of evolution, when you die, there will be judgment. It's appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. And if we are a product of evolution, there is no accountability to nothing. That's why evolution is popular. That's why it's received in the schools. You have no accountability. Go ahead, shoot everybody in the schools, because you will not have to answer to nobody. It's the monkey killing the monkey for the banana. Go ahead and do it. That's exactly what you've been preaching in the schools all these years. Dog eats dog. Man, the higher the run, the higher the weapons, the higher the accountability, that means the top monkey in the tree. That's what you've been teaching. So when kids are killing each other, shut up! That's what you've been preaching. But when we stand here and preach Jesus Christ, that there is a hope, there is accountability, even for me, that's saved. You see, as a saved, born-again, Bible-believing Christian, I will stand before a judgment. Not a judgment to say I'm going to heaven or going to hell. I'm already going to heaven. By the shed blood and the testimony and the gospel of Jesus Christ alone. Not of works. I'm not going to boast. I will praise and honor and give glory to Jesus Christ, my Savior, my Creator. But as a Christian, I will be judged for those sins that are not under the blood. And for those sins that I put under the blood, but I really didn't want to. I just did it because, you know, boo-hoo-hoo, I got caught. A worldly sorrow. But judgment is coming, and under evolution, there is no judgment because you came from nothing. And under the creation of the Bible recorded by God, you are accountable to that God that created you. And he even gives you, what's the main question? Lord, scholar, teacher, doctor, PhD, shrinkadinky, why am I here? Why am I here? Let's go back to Revelation chapter 4, shall we? And find out why we're here. Revelation chapter 4. It says, verse 11, For thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Let me find a little bookmark here. I think we're going to keep coming back to that. Let me get a bookmark. I have one. I have a bookmark here. I got a wonderful bookmark here. Why I preach on the streets? You want to know why? I got a pamphlet here. Why we preach on the streets? Step up. I'll give it to you free of charge. No toll-free number in front of me. Free of charge. No money. Why we preach on the streets? Because the Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. So, by creation, by a creator God, there is accountability to a creator, and yet there's no accountability to nothing of evolution. But evolution can give you no hope. You see, the fact is, and I will use the evolution views, there's no help. There's no hope of evolution. You see, Brontosaurus, that lived a million years ago, and ate our trees, he dies. And he goes in the ground, and the only thing he becomes is our petroleum so we can drive around in cars. And of Brontosaurus, of evolution, all we can find of Brontosaurus is a little thigh bone. That's it. Or maybe a rib. And of all these bestialities and, and things that we find in the ground of evolution, we have never found a complete skeleton. They're rare. And we sure cannot find the bones that says from this gap to that gap, it's gapless 
of evolution. And yet the Bible says, it's a point unto man once to die. We're going to die. And after this, the judgment. And that there is, in a general sense, a resurrection of everybody that's lived. Humans. No animals. Animals can't be saved, according to the Bible. So, in the point of view of creation, God knows where all our bones are. God knows where all our pieces and parts are. And he's going to gather them together with our soul. And one day we will stand before God. And we will have to give an account of ourselves. Now the Christians, those that are washed, not eaten in the blood, but are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, are going to go up at the time of the rapture. Now there will be some that die, there will be some that are living. Yet one time, one period of time, the Bible speaks about there's one time that all the Christians will disappear dead alive. And the Bible speaks about we are going to be at the judgment seat of Christ. We're going to stand before not only our Creator, but we're going to stand before our Savior. The one that washed us of our sins, the ones that saved us, the one that put our name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And the Bible speaks about a fiery trial of our works. And wood, hay, or stubble are things that burn up. There's no last reward. There's gold, silver, and precious stones for those things that don't burn up, and we will get rewards. And the thing is, even as a born-again, Bible-believing Christian that I preach the gospel, I am going to suffer loss at that judgment because I'm a sinner. This I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, but I'm still in this flesh, and it still sins. And God's going to recover all that by judging me, and one day giving me a brand new body that you can get too. You see, evolution does not preach the end of suffering, the end of sorrow, the end of pain. There's nothing recorded in evolution, the God of nothing, the monkey man prophet. There is no hope in nothing that came that here we are today selling fruits and vegetables. There are some honest dealers and there are some dishonest dealers. And we all come, you say, from nothing and a big explosion. And when I deal treacherously all through my life, I will die, I will go back to the ground, and nothing will ever happen to goddess evolution as they bury my body in Mother Earth. They'll be okay. I enjoy the public school God. But preacher, don't you dare bring that Bible to me, because that Bible says there is a God, there is a judgment, there is accountability, and if I don't do what that God says, I'll be damned and condemned. Keep that, pre keep that preacher, keep that Bible out of the public school system, and keep it out of my face. Marvel not if the world hates you, no, it hated me first, the words of Jesus Christ. So you see, when we come with the Bible, we preach the Bible. We are preaching accountability to the God that created us. And there is a God of accountability. And the reason why we die is the wages of sin is death. You would think that evolution, billions and billions and billions of years, we would have settled the death problem. And yet things are getting worse and worse. Evolution. Everything's getting better. Look in the mirror. Are you getting better? Are you getting handsomer? Or is, is your wife getting beautiful by the years? I told not. 
AIDS lines, AIDS wrinkles, oil of lay says evolution is a lie. You're not getting better. Your public schools are not getting better. Man is not getting better. And that's what the gospel message, that's what the Bible's about. The wages of sin is death. You will die because you are a sinner. There are no sins in evolution. So with no sins, there's no accountability, but yet evolution cannot explain death. Let me get your attention on another thing with the Bible and evolution. In evolution, there is no reason to have sex. Man evolved. What about the woman? And yet, in the Bible account, God says in his holy scriptures, I will not leave Adam helpless. He will have a help me, and he is to multiply and replenish the earth. And realize that the gift of sex is of God, not evolution. It's in the Bible. Genesis chapter 2. And they were naked, and they were not ashamed. And only after the sin entered and disobeyed God did they hit and hide from God. Where did clothes come from man in evolution? When did he get the idea that I'm going to kill my great grandpa lion so I can wear his coat? Where am I going to kill my cousins, the badgers, so I can wear their coats? How dare I kill my brothers and sisters, the furry animals, so I can get a coat? What is that? I mean, evolution preaches that we are all together as one big unity trying to kill each other. And yet the Bible preaches that those that are saved go out, and the go, go out and preach the gospel. Don't carry a gun. Don't carry a sword. And preach the gospel of peace, of great tidings. Those are the feet that God loves. Romans chapter 10. See, I'm, I'm here preaching the gospel. And I'm not going to force you to believe the gospel. I am not going to round you up and mandatory put you in a room with little desks as I get up in front of the classroom and mandatory teach you my religion that you believe is a religion. I am going to give you the opportunity for a free will to hear or not to hear. I mean, right now, you, you can walk away. There's nothing stopping you saying, I'm going to go get me some candy. I'll watch them how to make candy over there while that idiot speaks. But you see, oh, I have to hear you. You're here because the same constitution that says you can be there says I can be here preaching the gospel. You're not commanded to, to be here, but I am because the Bible says going all over the world and preach the gospel. Lift up your voice. And give all God the honor and glory by telling people about my son Jesus. What do you have to proclaim about evolution? What is the big word of evolution? It's a lot of missing facts. It's missing details. When they show you Lucy, Lucy's not real. She's been fabricated by a man. Uh... What's that other one there? Pecan Man. Oh, Pecan Man. He is the... Where is he? We never. He's lost. He's gone. Oh, we got a skull here of man. It's a pig who's had his teeth filed with a file. And those are lies. And I can tell you where evolution comes from. I can show you the lies of evolution and show you the fact is it's a religion. In John chapter 8. John chapter 8. John 8, 44. Ye of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, bold not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. And when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he's a liar, and the father of it. So you see, the evolution lie comes from Satan. 
It's a lie. There is no documented facts. There is no witnesses of that. Give me an account of your evolution of that fish jumping out of the ocean and sun tanning on the beach without becoming fried fish. Show me that account. He said, well, preacher, show me Jesus. I can show you 450 people that saw the resurrected Jesus Christ that after he died, that after he was buried, that they seen him alive and held him and touched him and heard him. And they will be called up one day before the judgment seats and give an account of Jesus Christ, the life, the death, and the resurrection. There is human witness, human proof of God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. I stand here before you as a witness, as a testimony of the saving power, the saving grace of Jesus Christ. By lives being changed. Oh, evolution changes. The textbooks every four years that your tax dollars has to buy the brand new books. King James 1611 Bible from the Geneva Bible, from the Bibles that go all the way back to the mouth of the prophets, from the mouth of Jesus, from the mouth of the apostles is the same. And has always been to say, since the God says, ah, let us make man in our image. And it has not changed. Man has changed. Man has become more corrupt. The Bible records our sins. Rebellion, death, murder, diseases. And yet, a loving and merciful God says, come to me. Let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Come. Does evolution say come? What does evolution say? It says nothing. It says no hope. You're going to die and somebody's going to raise you up and put you in a museum. That's what it's going to do. What, is, what does evolution preach? Death without hope. No answers. What's the Bible preach? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And when you're saved, you will not go to hell. When you are saved, you will go to New Jerusalem, heaven. And in the walls and gates of New Jerusalem, the gates are never shut. A miraculous city, a city of gold street, of all precious gems, of beautiful colors, no sun, no moon. For Jesus Christ is the light thereof. And by salvation of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone, I will take that vile, wicked body. Let's pick an apostle. Uh, I'll say Thomas. I like Thomas. Thomas speaks to certain people, but I like Thomas. Thomas has been dead quite a long time. Yeah, quite a long time. He's been buried many, many, many years. Evolution said he's going to just stay in that ground and someone's going to bury him up. They're going to try to put the bones together and they're going to stick him in, in a museum somewhere or make a church on him, a relic. That's what evolution says. You do know that there's a mother church out there that builds their altars on dead things. Like evolution. You know, 
there's a, there's a mother church out there. They've got the feathers of Gabriel. Well, it'd be dead by now. There's a church out there that's got the breast milk of Mary. It'd be dead by now. There's a, a there's a couple churches out there. There's a couple mother churches out there with the skulls of John the Baptist. How many heads did he have? And yet the explanation is, well, that's John the Baptist as a doe, and over here is John the Baptist as a child, and you buy that junk. Three for a dollar have a sale today on the heads of John the Baptist. But you see, as religion and evolution, you believe a lie with the bones and dead features of living creatures. Now, I'm not here to say there's dinosaurs, there are no dinosaurs. Who cares? I'm here because you are a living soul and you're going to die. The wages of sin is death. And to get out of hell is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ it has nothing to do with dinosaurs. But if you're to put your faith and belief in evolution, you'll burn in hell for all eternity. You see, in order to be saved, you've got to believe in a creator. In order to be saved, you've got to be accountable to a one that made you. We're coming up on, I think it's tomorrow. I don't pay attention. It's all, all vileness and wickedness. But I think tomorrow's Father's Day. What if evolution, you never had a father? Just one day, boom, you showed up in your parents' house. <laughs> we woke up in the middle of the night, son, and there you were. There was your nursery. It just popped up and you just started crying. We had no idea where you came from. You say, that's ridiculous, preacher. And yet, that's what you say about the Big Bang. This all one day, boom, here it is. Well, you got a revolving sun in Uranus. And yet, you give honor to the man that has part of your conceitment being made by somebody that here you are today. And I'm here to tell you, you are made by a creator. You are not a product of accident as far as the creation. Now, there was anybody who was an accident, I was. I mean, I was a pill baby. That's an accident. But God has designed our lives to give him honor, glory to him that created us, the creator. I believe I was born with the purpose to preach the gospel. And preach it I am. And yet I could have said all along, I said, no, God, I ain't going to do that. I have. But I will have to give an account to the God that created me. I am held accountable because I was made. It wasn't here by accident. you got to look around and say, you really? This happened by nothing? What was the Big Bang? What was the ingredients of the Big Bang? Nothing. Nothing exploded, and here we are. Try explaining that to the families of 9-11 that nothing crashed into those buildings. It's a figment of your imagination. And yet God, creator, who made you to worship him. And if you do not worship him by choice, you do not obey him by choice. And you go other ways. You are held accountable. You see, Jesus said, and you were waiting for this verse, I am the way. The way is not evolution. I am the truth. Evolution is a lie. And I am the life. Evolution textbooks are all about things that died. No man cometh unto the Father. There is no father in evolution. But by me. Now evolution.
evolution is a religion. Did you know that? Oh, church and mistake, church and mistake. Don't have the Bible in the school. You got revolution and education and religion in the school. Okay, let's look at evolution and let's look at the Bible. Today's gospel message is about evolution, in just in case you didn't get by now. I consider you my church in Daytona Beach, where two or three are gathered together. There I am, I miss you. Here's the two or three, we're gathered. God loves it. My family's learning just as much as you're learning. Okay. Evolution and God the Creator. There was a beginning. Alright? There was a beginning at one time in evolution. I don't know when. You don't know when. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created. Well, we match on that. Look at that. We both have a beginning that we have no idea when the beginning was. I don't know when God created. I have no idea. And I can't cut the earth up to count her rings and Zimbabwe. So we can agree on one thing between evolution and creation. It had a beginning. Evolution says from that beginning, nothing. Nothing. Check it out. Nothing. No thing. Not here. The Bible. In the beginning, God. So evolution, there's no God. That's atheism, isn't it? Doesn't evolution say without God? An atheist says there's no God. So evolution is atheism. With a brand new name. Go ask any of your professors if they believe God. 90% of the answer you will get will be no. That's atheism. Bible and Christianity. In the beginning, God. There's God. Where did God come from? He came from nowhere. He's always been. God says, Moses, you know what my name is? No, what it is? Let me write it down. Hold on. Okay. I am that I am. What's it mean, God? It means I was forever to be, ever was, I am now, and I'm forever to be, am. The name of God is always in the present. Who created God? Nobody. God has always been there. Oh, that's kind of stupid. God didn't come from, where, where did God come, where did your nothing come from? Why do you have a problem with God being existed, but you have no problem with nothing being existence? Alright, so. Let's look at books. Evolution, textbooks. Classrooms, high school classrooms, elementary classrooms, colleges, museums, textbooks. God, Christianity, the King James 1611 Bible, the Geneva Bible, Luther's Bible, Wycliffe's Bible, the words of God. What does the Bible say about itself? The word of God. Out of the mouth of God is the word of God. New Testament, you got some Bible say the words of Christ in red. In the Bible is the very word of God. The very word of Jesus Christ. Evolution. What product of evolution, prophet of evolution that was speaking to say, Hi, let me write this down. Oh, wow, that elephant became a stegosaurus. Oh, let me write that down. Draw a picture of it. And yet, we have at least 12 men that followed Jesus Christ for three and a half years 
of ministry that wrote and talked and felt and witnessed, never mind the women, never mind the blind, never mind the deaf, never mind the lepers, never mind the Pharisees, never mind the Sadducees, never mind the people of Israel that saw and heard and wrote down what Jesus said. You mean nobody could write down what the first caveman said, ooga booga. Excuse me, Mr. Caveman, how do you spell that? Evolution is without prophecy and it's without word. All right, man. All right. Have a good day. You see, when they write the books on evolution, it's billions of years after the fact without no witness. Hey, hey. good to see you. Good to see good to have you guys here. You could not bring up a prophet that was living during evolutionary times. You would bring up a skull and say, Mr. Skull, speak to me. Well, Mr. Skull, you don't make sense. Hand me a file. Okay. What's that over there? Is that a pig bone? I need that. Bring that over here. Super glue. Wow, they had super glue billions and billions of years ago. That's Lucy. I'll tell you about Lucy. Lucy in the sky with diamonds, LSD. You got to be doing drugs to believe that mess. But believing God is by the Holy Spirit and no outside interference upon the body, soul, and spirit. The Bible speaks of written men and witness. Evolution speaks of no witness at all. Only theories and hypotheses and I think so, I don't know so. Okay? Evolution. Salvation. Where do you go if you're a good evolutionist? Where do you go when you get the highest piece of paper that says you're the most stupidest person in the world? DD, dumb dog, ditch digger. You got the ultimate highest degree in evolution. Where do you go when you die? I didn't look up, but where's Darwin's body? Did I have it entombed somewhere? Or is he rotten like anybody else? I don't know. That's something interesting. I mean, Darwin was a prophet of evolution billions and billions of years after the fact. That one day he looked in a puddle, he saw mosquitoes swimming, he said, ah, that's where I came from. I guess I'll be a monkey's uncle. And died without Jesus Christ and then end up in hell, according to the Bible. You say, well, what's the Bible salvation? Ha <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Well, you guys asked good questions today. Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You don't believe in Jesus Christ, you shall be condemned into hell and burn forever in a lake of fire that burneth forever. Isn't that interesting? So I, I, I'm going to add the evolution debate now. But you see, let's look at it now. Did you see the Big Bang? No. Well, preacher, did you see God? No. Oh. You mean you never saw God? No. You never had a vision of God? No. You ever see Jesus? No. I will, but I haven't. Evolution believes the accounts of the records of the textbooks. Whatever those bones and rocks say, evolution believe in it. You say you believe that Bible? From in the beginning to amen, I believe the Bible. From Genesis to Revelation, Genesis 1 to Revelation 22, I believe it. 
I believe it's not only the Bible, I believe it's the absolute Word of God. I even believe that Word of God is Jesus Christ, John chapter 1. I am holding Jesus Christ in my hands by the King James Bibles. That's what I believe. I believe that these words will be forever and ever and ever eternity. Evolutionary words. Some have been put in, into fires. They've been changed. They've been trashed out in the garbage can. You have to make new ones. Yeah, I know people come up with new Bibles, but that's sinners. That's people who don't believe in God. And rebelling against God. That's not what we're talking about. Do evolution have all the answers in their textbook? Absolutely not. Do I have all the answers from the Bible? Absolutely not. You come up to me and say, Preacher, I've got... I probably won't have your answer. Why did God... I probably won't have that answer. I would probably have to say, I don't know. So you see, difference between evolution and Christianity is far and grand. But there's a sameness of evolution and Christianity. We have a beginning that we don't know when happened. I have a God, they don't. We have writing. And all the answers are not in the writing. So evolution matched with Christianity is a form of faith. I believe God by faith. Genesis 1. And evolutionists believe the Big Bang by faith. I've never seen God, they never see the Big Bang. Evolution has no salvation. And yet God the Creator has Jesus Christ. I'm here to tell you that your evolution is a religion. It is taken by faith. As I take God in the Bible by faith. So don't tell me you don't want religion in the school when you have a religion called evolution in the school. A hopeless, dead religion in the school. And what are the fruits of that religion? They're killing each other in the schools. Drugs in the school. Raping. Sodomy. Robbing. Torture. Bullying in the schools. That doesn't happen with Christianity. What's the difference between evolution and Christianity? Evolution is the old man. True Christianity is the new creature, the new man. Evolution has no hope. And if you were to nail down the PhDs, the DDs of evolution, they would say, say, hey, educated person, what does evolution have for me after death? Well, 14 billion years, we will... You gotta go around across the bridge. Oh, I actually go across the bridge. Yeah. Thank you. The big wave. Oh. 
blue then. Uh, if you were to go to your PhD and say, what does evolution have for me after death? Billions and billions of years later, we will solve all men's problems. You see, we are working on cancer right now, and we are solving cancer. And yet they have found women Egyptians, female Egyptians that had breast cancer. Well, your medical research did not do them no good. Your medical research did not do any good for someone who died in 1800s. And your medical research is not going to do anything to that person that's sitting behind your desk. If you've got billions and billions of years. Now you come to my desk. You say, preacher, what about after I die? I will say to you, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. You will get a place in heaven. You'll get your name in the Lamb's book of life. God will give you a mansion. He'll give you a brand new body. There'll be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more death by Jesus Christ. And one day God will take your body, your soul, and your spirit, and no one will ever find it again. He'll take that old body. He'll give you a brand new body. But, if you were to reject Jesus Christ as your Savior, God will take your soul and your body after his judge at the great white throne judgment and cast it off in the lake of fire that burns forever and ever and ever and you'll never get out. You see, there's hope in the Bible in God the Creator. And when we go to Revelation chapter 4, verse 11, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. You see, when we go to heaven, we'll worship Jesus Christ alone and God. It'll be how great Thou art, God, Jesus Christ. There'll be no honor and glory to religions. There's no religions in heaven. They're in hell. There'll be no honor and glory because you said the most memory verses in Sunday school. There'll be no proclamation of how much money you gave to missionaries. You see, when we get to heaven, we will worship and, and give the honor and glory to the one that created us. And ladies and gentlemen, not only did he create us, but he has given us the ability to be saved for him to be your creator and your savior. Evolution reaches out and says, hey, $35 to go into my museum. 85 bucks for the textbook. Jesus Christ reaches out and says, hey, come to me, it's free. Believe on me, I'll give you eternal life. And a whole much better benefits that we are not even worthy of. Just the fact is that our Creator will save us isn't that good enough. But evolution doesn't know this. But I will tell you where evolutionists will go when they die. And they don't know this. They will burn in the devil's hell forever. And there will be no relief. You see, the difference between evolution and true Bible Christianity is they have no God. And what gods they have cannot save them. Though they put faith in their religion, it's of Satan and it's a lie. And it will condemn. 
And if they were, and if you were to put your faith in Jesus Christ, and in Jesus Christ alone, thou shalt be saved. Heavenly reservations are made by the blood of Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. 